start the Salesforce introduction today. So this is the introduction class of Salesforce. Hi. Hi. Uh, so, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, I can hear you. Thank you. Okay, so uh, in the first module that we discuss about, we learn about the platform. When I say platform, it means we are going to discuss about the force.com platform. In Salesforce, there are so many certifications. So uh, it starts with the administration, administering Salesforce. So that is Salesforce admin. 201, that's one of the certifications. Then you go for the app builder, which used to be as 401. Now it is app builder. So when uh, why we are learning about the platform? Because uh, when I say platform, so many people think that they are going to talk about some programming concepts. So it's not actually about the programming. When I say platform, it means Salesforce allows you the customization. It has the force.com platform, so you can do the customization through point and click or by using the by using your programmatic skills. So platform means a place where you can customize the things. So do you have any Salesforce account, Sumit, as of now? Sumit, can you hear me? I can hear you. I'm sorry, the microphone is okay. muted. Oh. Yeah, I have the okay. account developer edition. Okay, developer edition. Yeah. So, okay, let me log in with your developer edition. And how much are you aware about Salesforce as of now? It's like I have done the trailhead exercises for the beginner level and the intermediate mm -hmm. levels. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So okay. right n right now I'm doing the intermediate level for the developer side. Like I have done the admin one, but I didn't do the admin, uh, okay. developer one. Okay. okay. Can you please log in? Give me your uh, username and the password so that I may log in here with your org. Yeah, it's uh, metasumit21 at gmail.com. Okay, let me just, uh, if you can, give it in the chat. Yeah, so, yeah thank you. So, we discuss about, uh, if you have gone through the trailhead, in trailhead, at first we discuss about some of the features of Salesforce. So first of all, can you tell me what is Salesforce, Sumit? Uh, this is like a CRM and you can say the uh, cloud side uh, server to save data and like uh, to perform the uh, whatever the CRM uh, operation we have done, we can do in Salesforce. And like there are various platforms like the force.com or cloud side uh, cloud services. So basically, we can say we can perform all the operation like database and everything at oh. one server. Okay, okay. So Salesforce is basically uh, uh, an organization situated situated in San Francisco, right? And one of yeah. the things that it develops is CRM, right? So we are using Salesforce as a CRM here, and it is completely based on cloud computing. Cloud computing means your data occupies some space at the server. Okay, it is maintained at the server. Your data is secured at the server, at the in the cloud, which is called cloud. Okay, so in order to log in with any cloud computing system, like if you use the G, uh, Google Drive or a Gmail account, these are all the concepts of uh, cloud computing. You just need your username and the password, and you can access your data anywhere. Yeah. Right, Salesforce provide you the facilities like uh, it upgrades the system. Okay, in the meantime, can you please verify? You must have yeah. got. Uh, yeah, just do it. Uh, I, I will get the code. I will tell you the code. 
Okay, sure. So, Salesforce. Um, so, uh, Salesforce enables you to save your data in the cloud, and Salesforce has three releases in a year. So, and in every release, it updates the system, the Salesforce, and then uh, it are uh, the the updates are automatically incorporated into the customer's accounts. For an example, if you purchase a subscription from Salesforce, and uh, uh, if uh, and uh, after the releases, if, when Salesforce has releases, they will your org, your account will be automatically updated, and you will not be charged for that. You are only charged for your subscription. Yeah. For an example, you are purchasing the subscription for a year, so you will be charged uh, for the year only. And if there is any maintenance, any update, you are not going to charge for that. Yeah, right. Okay. Another uh, thing is Salesforce is based on MVC architecture. Do you know what is MVC? Yeah, it's like uh, something view client. Uh, actually, I forget the full name. It's model model view architecture. Model view architecture. Yeah, right. Have you got any code as of now? Yeah, I have done Maybe. some code like on my uh, developer console. Right now, it's just a minute. I will check. Mm -hmm. Did you verify it? No, I didn't get yet. Okay, well, it's saying that unable to send you the verification code at the time, at the moment, because you may have tried it earlier. Okay, that's fine. I used a different verification method, I think. Let's because give it a try. I think I have my, uh, yeah, the text code. Use the text code one. Yeah, yeah I got it. It's seven eight five seven eight. Okay, so right now we are logged into Salesforce, and uh, so I was talking about the uh, releases of Salesforce, and uh, then you have they maintain the system, and Salesforce is based on the MVC architecture. That's the model view controller. So first of all, you have the model. Model means, uh, for an example, if you have uh, uh, you are running any organization and uh, you do the employment. So employment will be done by the HR administration. So for that, you need an application where you can manage the things related with HR. So you should have any HR application. So your all applications appear here. Right? You have sales, call center, marketing, app launcher, community. So these are all the apps. You can create your own app, and then you can customize it. So this will all come under the model and then you will have um, since you are dealing with the HR administration you will be creating few uh, creating few, few objects uh, like job application employee data uh, employee portal right and then all your objects will appear at the top here where you see right now home chatter files names reports dashboard these are the standard uh, objects in Salesforce, which we will discuss later, and uh, then so it comes under the model. Then we talk about the view. What is view? So view is the layout. In any uh, of the objects, if I go, I will see some uh, layout, right? If I go mm -hmm. to accounts, I will see the layout of accounts. I open the account, so I see uh, a few of the buttons, standard buttons are appearing at the top. Then I have the account detail, right? Then I have some related lists. These are the related lists, contact, opportunities, cases. So these are all, uh, these all come under the view, right? 
then you have yeah. buttons at the top so b custom button standard buttons these all come under the uh, layout uh, the view then you have the so MVC then you have the controller controller is the logic so yeah. logic what, what logic do you put in in Salesforce so for an example you use the validation tool you use the workflows yeah. approval processes process builder right so these are yeah. all the part of your logic so these things I'm talking about the point and click right now if I now the same things you can do in progr uh, programming way like if you go to the developer console do you know what is developer console I believe yeah. you are familiar okay yeah. so if you go to the developer console or if you just click on setup you can create your classes right so classes the FX classes uh, will work as the custom controllers custom controller yeah. is once again they are the logic that's the logic your visual force page will be treated as the view right mm -hmm. so that's your yeah. view and then you have the model so if you are using the standard controller you can again use your accounts and the fields whatever the fields you have the standard fields and the custom fields you can use it in your custom yeah. application so that's the programming way okay. right. so so far have you done any certification no I haven't done any certification I just started a few days ago uh, you can say like 15 days ago 10 or 15 days okay like uh, so one of the main uh, functionalities if you talk about we have in Salesforce is that's the multi-tenancy in so many interviews the you know interviewers ask what is multi-tenancy do you know do you have any idea about it Sumit? I what is multi? No, I don't have the specific. I, I actually I don't know the definition of that. You, you can give it a try. Multi tenant. It's like we can use. Actually, I don't have exact definition. Okay, no problem. So multi tenancy means, for example, if there is a building, and in one building there are more than one tenants living what they do is they share the same resource and then they pay to the landlord right in the same in the same way when you are using Salesforce in Salesforce uh, all the employees of your organization right they can reside in the system they can you know they can be documented in the system and they yeah. will be uh, sharing the same resource like they will be seeing the accounts and the other objects whatever their require, requirement is you will be maintaining your security as per that and so they will be sharing the same resource so since they are sharing the same resource in one single application and you are paying to Salesforce that, so that's one of the examples of multi-tenancy it's like okay. can we say like multi-user uh, platform for mm -hmm. particular organization you can say like different different organization have a different different multi users. I didn't get you, but let me just uh, explain it to you. For example, when you get your uh, developer org, in your developer org there there are licenses given. Yeah, right. So the, one of the uh, uh, costly, may uh, uh, most costly license is Salesforce license. Okay. This is your company information. Okay. Every company has its ID, organization ID. That's the ID for your organization. Then you have the, uh, it says which edition are you using because Salesforce has different uh, editions, right? Like okay. the developer, professional, enterprise, unlimited. Okay. These are all the editions of Salesforce. Then you have the user licenses. Yeah. So you have Salesforce license. So right now, since this is a developer org and this is for free, they give you two licenses. Total licenses, the Salesforce license is two. And you have used all these licenses. So if you want to use, and these licenses are used for different users in Salesforce. For an example, if you have 10 people in your organization, 
but you can you just uh, can afford uh, you cannot afford for 10 people so you just buy five licenses and then you assign okay. it to five users and rest of the users you assign them the charter license charter license will help them to communicate they can just you know share their things on the charter but they cannot access the uh, objects like account uh, cases um, dashboards they cannot access these things they can just communicate they can just share things so right. this is this is this is as a, a pay i mean i mean whatever you pay you are just uh, for an example you need something you need this two license you pay for that you need three license you pay for that so this is as uh, as per your requirement you are going to share the same resource but you need to pay to the sales force so you have this one one landlord you have this one you know master here that's the sales force and different users in one org are the uh, they are the tenants so they are just living in the organization in one organization and they are paying to sales force i have one question uh, yeah like suppose suppose i uh, i'm using this developer edition right <laughs> and like i can assign as many as user i can right like i don't know exact number what developer edition have like how many user i can assign you know what i mean okay okay mm -hmm. so is this the same thing for the another addition other addition too like suppose i make the users and give the authorization to them also as a admin admin or like other uh, yeah it, it works in the same way the, it works in the yeah. same way but there are some limitations yeah this is there are I'm some limit, there are limitations like in salesforce if i one of the limitation which i can talk about right now is uh, because this is uh, uh, not feasible to remember all the limitations but i can tell you that every subscription has some limitation okay uh -huh. uh, let me see salesforce limitation so i'm just asking like for another edition how many user we can assign yeah that's what i'm saying that in every other org there are some limitations right okay, okay. so there is a cheat there is a cheat sheet available at salesforce they have their articles and they because uh, every time they update it okay? okay and there are you know there are limitations in the features as well not just in the users okay, okay. so for an example if i talk about one of the limitations active validation rules per object in contact manager you have 20 right mm -hmm. in enterprise edition you can have 100 in developer ed edition you can have 100 so this is one of the examples okay. if you want to have 500 validation rules per object you will go for the performance edition you will not go for the developer edition right okay Uh, uh, as far as the number of users are concerned, the question that you are asking, I'll have to check. Okay, how many users you can? Uh, I mean, I'll, uh, or I'll what I'll do is I'll just uh, give you a link so that you can check these things yeah. there. Okay. Yeah, right. Well, this it like it's fine. Okay, so. So these are few things. What is a record? What is a field? Object or force.com? What is an app? So record is something. So what is an object? Do you know what is an object? Object is. Can you tell me any idea? Can you give me some idea about object and field? Uh, like we can say it's a kind of tab or like where we uh, like usually Salesforce use the meta data object to store the data like it has the field and which uh, stores the record this is exactly object. you have the understanding i believe yeah. because yeah. object is just the container which keeps your records for an example yeah. if i have, if i say account so account is one of the object this is to keep the account data without yeah. data the form is the structure is called metadata 
So that is also called data about data. Okay, so that's okay. the metadata, right? So without the records, this is called metadata, and when you have the account record, so object is a container. It keeps the records, right? So in order to keep your record in detail, we have fields, right? For an example, in one uh, uh, in in order to store the account data, we may need the need, uh, name of the organization. We can uh, uh, we may need the source from where the account was derived. Maybe it was you send an email Number. and they turned up. You uh, you approached them through some sort of campaigning, and then they uh, sh showed their interest and they got. Uh, uh, you created them, converted them later into into account. Okay, so so source is one of the fields. So fields totally depend on how detailed you want your data to be. Object is to store your data. Once you enter your data, so that is the record. Okay. Yeah. So you have fields to keep your uh, record in detail. You have object that stores the fields and the record information. Then you have the org. What is org? Org is the organization, right? So yeah. organization is the place where you do every activity. You log into your org, right? Then you access the objects, fields, records. Then you have the force.com platform. So on th on this platform, you have your organization based. Where is your organization based? On force.com, where you can modify things as well. So force.com allows you to modify the things through point and click or by programmatic way by using the FX and visual force. All right. Okay. Then you have the apps at the right drop down. So as I said, if you need the uh, need something about the HR administration, so y you can develop your own app. If you need something about warehousing, you can create your app warehouse. Right, uh, I believe in Trailhead you have something about the warehouses. Yeah. So you can create that. Yeah, actually, yeah, I did like one warehouse. Okay. So this was it, and. Then you have the warehouse here, right? So you have been following the uh, uh, you have been following the uh, trailhead. That's why you have been able to create these all. So that's good. And basically, uh, in Salesforce, if you want to do the certifications, you have to understand the logic. Okay. Apart from doing the exercises, you also need to understand the logic. Like if I ask you what is multi-tenancy. So they ask you a question about what is MVC, what is multi-tenancy. In MVC, when you say point and click, what do you refer by point and click when I say a model in MVC? So that's object and fields, right? When I say view, what do we refer in the programmatic way in MVC? So that's something, the visual force pages, right? So yeah. you have to also understand the, uh, in order to clear the certification, you have to understand the logic. And trust me, Salesforce is nowadays on boom, and there are, you know, multiple, you know, many jobs, so many jobs in the, in the market. But now they are looking for good candidates in the market. Why? Because every, every, I mean, every other person is showing their interest in getting certified, right? And uh, so that's why now they need good people. So you have to be logically strong. Yeah, right. Right. So, OK, so you t we talked about the clicks and code in Salesforce. We yeah. talked about the, uh, so why do we need uh, to go uh, to the codes? So for an example, if I ask, if I ask you to do something, uh, if I ask you to create an object, so what do you look for first? You look first for first. Will, yeah, go ahead. Can I? So yeah, first yeah. I will look into the standard object or custom object that I can uh, make directly from the uh, 
custom field or standard field or uh, standard objects. Okay, so mm -hmm. like some organization have more specific requirements which which we cannot uh, build in the uh, you know the point and click uh, point through point and click. So for that we need the programming thing. Okay, let me give you some examples. Some you know exact uh, example that you should say in the interview. For an example, if I go to let me go to some of the standard objects. I'm going to accounts, okay? And I open this account here, okay? These are the standard buttons: edit, delete, include offline. These are all the standard buttons, okay? I want one of the so. Uh, <coughs> For an example, you join somewhere as an admin, and now they are asking you, I want a button here. I want a button here which will help me to uh, get the account location. Account location means the location of the company. Where is it located? Mm -hmm. Okay. So clicking on that button should execute some action which will take you to the Google Maps and where that will show you the location of that organization. Right. Okay. So how is that possible? That's that's something not the uh, out of the box feature. That's something you need. That's the custom feature, right? So custom yeah. feature which which cannot be done by the point and click. So now yeah. you will switch to the programming. You will create the button, but the logic will be written in the programming, right? Okay. You will create your logic, and then you um, then you will be able to achieve this. So when you uh, when I ask this, uh, when do you go to point and click, and when do you go for programming? First, you say, I'll, uh, I'll see. Okay, if I give you a task, first you will explore all the possibilities in the point and click. Okay, you will not say custom object and standard object. You will say that I'm going to explore all my possibilities in the uh, point and click. If after exploring all, all those possibilities, if I see that it is not uh, something which is out of the box feature, and it cannot be achieved by point and click. Then I'll go for the, then I'll go for the program so, programmatic way, way. Okay, so that's something can be achieved by the programming. So for that's why every admin, if uh, even if you are going to be you know certified uh, for the ADM 201, that's the administration certification of Salesforce. Still, you need to be aware of some of the programmings, and you need to, first you you need to understand the limitations of point and click, and then you should also understand that this thing cannot be done through point and click. Then I should go for the program. Again, if you are going to be a developer, you need to understand. Still, you need to understand what all things you can do by point and click. Even if you are a developer, so you cannot directly go to development. Yeah, okay, right. some. If a task is given to you, it doesn't mean that you should go and write some code straight away. You should explore all your possibilities in the point and click. So that's how you know they ask you questions, various questions in your interview, and uh, these sort of questions are asked. When do you go for the programming and point and click? Yeah, right. So basically, we should have knowledge for both admin side and the developer side too. At least you should know the limitations. Yeah. Okay. So, what is an app? Needless to say, right now, because uh, uh, I believe you understand. Uh, for an example, first you are given the requirement that I want to build an HR application. Then what you do is you look for, you note down all the objects, which all objects you need in your HR organization. So you need the job application, you need the review, you need the employment portal. So these are the these are your objects. Now, which all fields you need under the job application? Under job application, I need uh, uh, application uh, position name. I need I need the uh, job application number, right? So you can just analyze all the uh, requirements of your organization, fields and everything. Then you can incorporate all those objects and fields under your app. You create your app, and then so first, so your object is the con container that keeps the field information. Like here, they are showing to um, one of these screenshots. They are showing event event name. 
right? So event name is yeah, what is event name? Event name is one of the uh, uh, one of the objects, right? So it's the object. Yep. Under under the object, you have different fields: attendee name, title, company, email. So these are the different fields. Now this is going to be under some app, right? Under some app, because uh, if you do not assign it under any app, it will not appear in the uh, as a object as a tab in Salesforce. Right, so we need to assign it under any app. So I'll be so this is one of the objects in my organization event. Then I will be creating more uh, objects as per my requirement, and they will, then I will assign them all under one app. Okay, mm -hmm. because in that way I'll be able to put my all things together. Okay, so you have already uh, done that. So these are a few of the. Uh, trailhead examples like fundraising app, you develop the app, right? Yeah, I think you, so. Uh, you go to the ad app and then you just uh, yeah, go yeah, ahead and uh, create your app, right? Right. Create a simple garage manager app using the force.com app quick start wizard. So that's one of the ways from where you create your app. That's a quick, quick wizard, ad app. If you click on, so there are uh, ways, multiple ways to create the app. That's if I go to the home page. Sorry, I have to go to the setup. I have add app here, right? So this is the quickest way to create an app. The other way is you go to create, then you click on apps. So you have been working with it, so you must be aware of it. You can click yeah. on new, and then you can create your app here. Mm -hmm. What did that button stand for the quick start? Which one? The quick start new and reorder, right? The, what is the, go to on the app. Mm -hmm. As well. App, quick links. Talking about yeah. the quick links. No, no. When you go to the app page, like the list of the app, there is a quick start page. You, ju you just type the uh, app, create app. So that's again the same thing. That's like when you have the add app at the uh, setup page. This is the same uh, yeah, environment. Yeah, this one. This is the yeah. quick start. Yeah, that's the quick start. Time. Okay, fine, fine. You got it? Yeah, right. This is the same that you uh, yeah, created your it, yeah. garage application with. Okay. Okay, so uh, that's going to be. Okay, so how we are going to. Uh, uh, let me just give you some overview how we are going to proceed on further with the classes. Okay. Uh, so we will be learning. Uh, what I'm going to cover is I'll be learning all the admin stuff. Okay. Mm -hmm. Plus the developer stuff. Develop. When I say developer, it means the 401 app builder. Okay. okay. Then I'll be covering the visual force and FX figure basics. Okay. Then I'll be giving you some questions. Okay. Questions for interview and questions for your exam. Uh, the certification. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is how we are going to uh, do the things. I'll be. Let me show you the syllabus. What we are going to do. I'll be giving you the uh, PDFs. Okay, this is the table of content which we are going to cover. 
we have we will be discussing about the we just discuss about the basics few more things will be there then we'll be discussing about data modeling data management ui customization salesforce one chatter basics reports and dashboard formulae and validation so there are you have been uh, you know following the trailhead so in trailhead there are not all the things given yeah right so that's that's the basic information that you get from trailhead yeah okay so and we'll be doing the activity on every uh, every module like okay. when i say about data modeling we'll be learning about how to create relationships right how to create objects fields that you already know but still we'll be covering these things yeah because we'll like about, uh, yeah the i have the problem with the definition thing like most of the time i forget the definition so just i have to uh, make sure about the you can say the logic one and the mm -hmm. second thing is programming so i'm okay. a little bit weak in programming so okay this is the do do, do you know any programming language as of now i do know the basics of java and html or c++ that's, that's fine and that's basic great. like i don't that hard coder or like never use the program so okay you are going to find it very easy it's not going to something it's not a rocket science you're going to learn it very easily mhm mm if you have the basics if you have the basics of java like you said uh, c++ in any of the developer uh, interviews they ask you questions about uh, oops concepts they ask yeah. you yeah they ask you about uh, questions related with fx then they ask you questions about visual force and the triggers mm -hmm. okay then they ask you about the best practices okay mm -hmm. best practices of writing a trigger writing mm -hmm. um, an apex code right mm -hmm. so these are the things they ask you i'll guide you about the interview uh, basically i'll be giving you the questions for the interview and they are going to do the trick okay, okay. all right okay so we are so this is the syllabus that we are going to follow if you uh say at the bottom you have app builder mm -hmm. this is the part of the uh, app builder certification change management is the part of uh admin 401 no change management is not admin this is uh this is under the 401 that's the development change management where you discuss about the sandboxes and you yeah. discuss about the data migration yeah yeah like we work in sandbox and then we send that those thing in production right right yeah then we'll uh, discuss about lightning connect lightning experience basics apex basics and database basics that's you use the database to fetch your data in salesforce that's the sokol salesforce object query language that you use SQL with Java, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then you have uh, testing. You do some testing when you write your code because seventy-five yeah. percent code is needed to be covered yeah. of testing. Then you have visual code spaces. So these these are the things that we are going to discuss. Mm -hmm. uh, today I was stuck in the traffic, so I got a little late. So, but uh, by tomorrow we'll be starting it at eight o'clock. Um, by Indian Standard Time. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. No problem. So today so, I'm going to send you this. Okay. Mm -hmm. So these are basically uh, some of the notes you will uh, be fine related to the trailhead, but still I would say read it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And if you have any question, do ask me tomorrow. Okay. Okay. So far, any question? Um. No. Right now it's fine. <laughs> might be in future you will get a lot question i'm sorry uh so far it's fine like right now i don't have any question okay just give me one moment yeah
So who is the CV tech organizer? Uh, Vamsi is the organizer. <coughs> you are okay. not aware of? No, I know the by name. Like I don't know. I thought like you just conduct the training. I don't know. No, he is the organizer. Okay. Okay, so uh, let's meet tomorrow and we'll be discussing more topics. Okay. All right. Yeah, fine. Thank you. Uh, what's your name? Thank you. Yeah, my name is Ravi. All right, all right. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks so much. Have a good day. Yeah, yeah you too. Bye.